Hello and welcome. I am Colonial Rebel, one of the devs for Black Ice Hearts of Iron 4, and this is going to be a quick getting started and little tutorial on how to start Black Ice, how to play Black Ice, how to sort of get used to it. So step one, you're going to need three of the Black Ice mods, the graphics and sound, the, the colored events, these are larger pictures for the events, and the main mod. I will have links to these three in the description below. So now I'll just play and uh, wait for us to get to the main menu. So Black Ice, while well, we're loading, Black Ice is a overhaul mod. It We want to change every aspect of the game, make it more in-depth. And to do that, it, it requires a lot of time. So if our updates be periodic, but we want to make sure that everything we put out to you all is of the highest quality. On that note, Black Ice is for people who want a more in-depth game. A lot of people coming from Hearts of Iron 3 were upset that Hearts of Iron 4 wasn't as deep of a strategy game. There wasn't much to do. Well, Black Ice aims to change that. We are now at the main menu. Uh, I think the Steam version does not have a main menu screen. But our update is coming soon. Uh, today is the 18th of August, 2018. So we're going to go to single player. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to play as Germany. Now, there is to note, you cannot start in 1939. We only allow you to start in 1936. Because there, it's double the order of battle and each each country setup is very in depth and to have to double that would take too much time so we're only going to start in 1936 for the time being that may change in the future so we're going to play germany here just as a quick tutorial it's personally my favorite country to play as the a big thing about black ice is that we try to make it as hard as we can for the german player because if they conquer the Soviet Union too easily, then they win the game, basically. Also, in the Steam version, contrary to the press to the released version in our... Bleh, contrary to the version that will be coming out soon, Belgium and the United Kingdom, their colors are going to be a little different, just to differentiate them. So this is only temporary. So we're going to go into the game. I am using the Steam version today. Black Ice is a big mod, so it does take a little bit to load. And we are at your first events. These are your startup events. This is just a quick description of the game, of what this mod does. Let's click OK here. Um, and this is going to be a relatively important uh, event. If your computer is not at the highest sort of peak, if your processor isn't as good, maybe your graphics card isn't as good, you're going to want to click this button here. This is going to give you an important performance improvement. And what these two do, what these two options do, is that it takes a bunch of these South American countries right here and just turns them all into, I believe, Ecuador? Or we can turn all of them into Ecuador except for Brazil. So I'm just going to do that. Except for these controlled by uh, European powers. Mexico is independent. So we're going to come back here. So the first thing you're going to notice is NATO symbols. Now I know some people are like, oh, I don't like NATO symbols, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's, I was not the person to like NATO symbols initially. But once you learn the general gist of how it works, it becomes much easier to just immediately look at something and know what it is. So, if it has an X, let me just go here. If it has an X at all, there's infantry. If there's two dots, that means there's wheels, so it must be on some sort of car or truck, so it's motorized, or semi-motorized even. This is cavalry, that's not really important for this game very much. G is, um, what's it called? garrisons 
If there's a circle, it's some kind of armor. And if there's an L in it, it's light armor. I they believe if there's an H in it, there's heavy armor. I don't know if I can find it. Black Ice does add a bunch of new division symbols here. These black ones here are SS. They're special divisions. They get some unit buffs. These are still the same. If they're blue, they're naval. If they're green, they're mountaineers or paratroopers or special. Then here's the militias. But we're going to go ahead and just start going through each part of Black Eyes. Just a quick overview. So we're going to start over here. Click on our flag. And you're going to immediately notice that this looks different from Vanilla. We have a lot of laws here. Now, this is a way to manage your country more in depth. To try to min-max what you can get out of your country. If you're not familiar with what min-maxing is, it's sort of sacrificing one part of your country to really boost, let's say, maybe production or really boost your manpower because maybe you're running low on those or you need to really pump things out. So we have the mobile, this is your civilian mobilization, this is your factory mobilization. These are relatively the same as vanilla here. And then we have sort of the nationalization, the state of the nationalization of your industry. Does your government own the factories or is it a capitalistic? Is it privately owned? And it, so each law gives us certain bonuses. Of course, moving down this tree will give you, let's say, more factories, uh, ability to build more factories faster. But there's a cost to everything, and that's something Black Ice wants you to know. There is a cost for every decision you make. Here is your um, foreign investing law. Some of these laws aren't as important. You won't be going through trying to change them, but sometimes you might need to change them. There's a tariff law, there, your import-export laws, your tax laws, your, your press censoring laws, your um, security policy. So basically, how do you run your police? Is it a military police? Or is it civil liberties? As it says. Uh, and here is a... This is actually... I believe we're taking this out. This was a placeholder for stuff with national unity, but with that being taken out, this might be removed from the game soon. It just tells you the state of your nation, whether it's a unified nation or if it's just falling apart. We have sort of your foreign policy, whether you, are you a warmonger or are you like the United States, sort of isolationist, initially, which the United States can change. We have um, financial operations. Are you putting bonds out trying to get money, which you see right here? This has not been implemented yet. This is still a work in progress. It is a very big and complicated thing, but... We're not going to worry about that right now. And then we have your one of the most important laws in the game. Your mobilization law, your conscription policy as it's called. How it tells it tells you the state of what your army is in. So you have to be you so for example, Germany starts at standing army. And if you look at the stats, you have minus 50% division attrition minus division organization sorry minus 50 percent division recovery rate minus 50 percent or naval organization etc that is because your people are not currently all in the armed forces they're they're living civilian lives and as a result you get bonuses to all these other things like dockyard output factory output the people are in the economy doing things but before you go to war, you will need this. General mobilization is the highest form of mobilization. This here is what will get rid of your organization penalty, which is the most important thing you need. If you do not do this, you will cry because your armies are losing. So be sure to go for this. And there is a grace period. So when you click this, there's going to be a few grace period. If it's a few, it's a few weeks, where you're going to be on mobilizing, which you don't get this, but you also don't get this. You will need this here. 
you, this is the sort of grace period between this. So, before going to war, general rule, click general mobilization. It will save your life. Now we're going to go to sort of the draft policy. So, we have sort of like one year draft, two year draft, three year draft. You can be either only volunteers, you can expand the draft, extensive draft, and of course, fan favorite, scraping the barrel. We're not going to take that out. And then we have sort of the age brackets for recruitment. Opening it up to more people, and yes, some people are looking at this as like 12 to 70. Sometimes you're just really, really desperate, okay? But yes, you can conscript 12 year olds if you're on your last legs. This is just age brackets, it just opens up more of your population to being recruited, and of course it does have side effects. So, 18 to 35, I mean 19 to 30 is the, 19 to 25 is the lowest bracket. 2%, but you get some bonuses back. But if you're going to go open it up for 18 to 45 year olds, you're going to get uh, three times the amount of manpower. But you're going to lose division recovery and organization. People will not believe you're winning the war if you're having to go that far into into your manpower pool. Uh, and here we have women labor regulations. Basically, instead of having only men in factories, you can encourage women to go into the factories, which opens up more manpower to you, but it does have a cost of some of your factories output. And stability for your country. So you're gonna have to make sure you watch your stability. You will have to play your decisions very carefully. Recruitment laws, usually this isn't much of anything unless you get an event or a focus for this. But this does regulate how much manpower you can get from your subjects. Now, here's an, another important few laws. This is your standard of training. This basically differentiates a very well-trained German army from massive amounts of conscripts from the Soviet Union. You can have a law regulating just how much your troops are trained before they go before they are deployed into their divisions onto the map. So our lowest is rifle and potato doctrine, my personal favorite, which means it takes 30% less time to train your divisions, but they have 20% less organization and 20% less recovery rate. And the best thing to have is elite standards. This is something you will want to get pretty quickly if you're trying to build a very strong army. I mean, even if you're a small nation, this will help you right here. Elite standards is the best, but high standards by no means is bad. And then here's another thing that's important, officer training. Now, this is a very, very important law because it gives you so many buffs in certain places, but it does have an effect on your research time, which might be important for some people, because you're taking some of your smartest men, smartest individuals, <clears throat> and putting them into the military instead of the economic force. But you do want elite officer training. It will help you a considerable bit right here. And the final law we have is your education investment. This just basically gives you more research speed at the expense of factory output. So with the laws covered now, this is something you're gonna to wanna to sort of plan out what you wanna do before starting. We're gonna go here into the politicians, which you can tell there's a lot more than in vanilla. So we have some, your main cabinet here but you also have economic ministers, which will be important. You're going to want to get some of these guys. And majors, major countries will have special ministers already put in. And each of them have very, very useful bonuses. You're going to want to definitely look through these. These research and production designers, they're basically the same for now. This military staff is basically the same. But we're going to come down here to the factories, which will bring me to another topic. These are your counters for your factories, right here. And I believe in the next version they are moving, but I'm going to go ahead and explain these factories in a moment. 
We're going to go to the tech tree so I can explain this. So I'm in the industrial tab right here. And you're going to notice, different from vanilla, there are a lot more factory types right here. This tree is expanded, which is a theme for Black Ice. We like to make things bigger, more expansive. You need to have choices what to do, not just a linear path that vanilla will give you or other, even other mods. You have choices. Now, personally, I always go for concentrated industry. Germany, historically, AI will play, I think, a, a, I believe it picks dispersed industry. I believe concentrated is almost always better if you know how to protect your nation. Which brings me to these factories right here. Now, these are not factories that will produce anything physically. This will not add anything to this number up here. These, you build these in your nation, and as a result, you will get bonuses towards building those things. For example, if I build a bunch of tank workshops, I will get a bonus to how fast I make tanks which is good if you're Germany, you want to put pump out tanks. And the same thing with trucks and with artillery. It, it makes you more efficient at building that, which allows us to specialize countries more than others. So Germany, for example, does not get many ship, does not get ship workshops or submarine workshops. But they do get tank workshops, small arms, uniforms. My suggestion, if you're Germany, even the, even the UK definitely, you need fighter workshops and tank workshops. You, you'll honestly want everything except these three here, but it's your personal choice, to be honest. So with these factories discussed, let's go to the construction tab. And the first thing you're going to notice is, good god. That's a lot of buildings. Well, there's going to be more in the next release. I will get to that at some point. In probably in another, in another video tutorial. But we still have civilian factories. Still have military factories. These are what you want. This is what's going to build everything right here. Your military factories. Naval dockyards. Oil refineries. And rubber refineries. Now this is important. We have split oil refineries and rubber refineries into two different buildings. That is very important to note. Don't build this and be like, oh, where's my rubber? No, the two different buildings. We also have a steel mill, which gives you some aluminum as well. And this is a Chinese only, only building here. Backyard furnace, which gives you some iron. Rocket sites the same, nuclear reactors the same. And then we reach these specialty buildings. Don't worry about this right here, that doesn't matter. Um, these buildings here are still the same, except we've added a pillbox defense, which is sort of a, oh no, I need a quick defense. Look at the price of this pillbox defense versus the price of this land fort. This is if you're falling back and you quickly need something built to defend us, a very important place, you just plop that down really quickly and shift it to the top of your production queue. Uh, these here are all the same. This just gives you a bonus to uh, AA. This is the flak tower for Germany. So with buildings discussed, it, oh, it's also important to notice sorry, uh, that buildings have 16 factories max used instead of vanilla's 15. That is important to note. So, finish, we finished construction. I'm going to come back here to decisions. Now, you're going to notice, oh god, that's a lot of decisions. Let's just deal with these. So, World War II doctrines. The activation of this is changing in our next update, which is coming soon. But, what it basically means is you need to finish... Your World War I doctrine, which we have a whole tree for World War I army doctrines, before you finish World War II, before you start World War II doctrines. Now, you cannot see World War II doctrines in this current build until you finish these texts, if you just highlight over it. Once you finish these texts, this will 
mark itself green, so you just click it, and then you'll be able to go to the tech tree, and there will be a World War II tab right here. And if we look right here, Germany starts with most of the World War I doctrine. Miners will not start with all of these. Some might, but most will not. You will have to research this. And here's Rolling Barrage. This is what you will need to start World War II doctrines. In our next build, World War II doctrines will be unlocked depending on what what technologies you have researched. So some doctrines will open up depending on if you've researched, let's say, sniper pits or tunnel mines. It's not, it's still a work in progress. Okay. Anyway, back to decisions. Um, there's a bunch of decisions here that will give you free units. Also, there's a bunch of events that will give you free units. Some people don't like getting free units. They might not like the templates, but Heed my advice. If they give you something for free, if we give you something for free, take it. It might be very useful to you because that is time you don't have to spend building more military. And time is a very precious commodity in this mod. Time and resources and of course manpower. We make manpower very, very valuable. So. And another thing to note, just specifically talking about Germany, is the MIFO bills. German players should keep their eyes on this decision. Once it expires, you, and if, you have to renew this every few, uh, every time it's almost complete. You have to renew this so that the allied powers don't see what you're doing, just to put it simply. Just keep pressing this button whenever you can. Otherwise, if it expires, you're going to lose a lot of civilian factories. So you cannot use them anymore, which is going to hurt you a lot. So be careful. That is, you've been warned. So we're going now to the research tab. I've already discussed World War I doctrines. I've discussed a little bit in industry, but I'll come back to it. But I'm going to go ahead and start here with the infantry tab. And yes... That is a tech tree right there. Something people will tell you about Black Ice, if, they, if they'll give you one word or a one sentence thing, is like, there's a lot of equipment. And yes, there is. Armies are not built solely on, inf on rifles and a few support equipment. They need trucks. They need headquarters equipment. They need ammo. They need a lot of things to operate. They need uniforms. They need artillery, infantry guns, mortars, heavy machine guns. You have to make sure you keep up to date with stuff. So, headquarters equipment is an important thing to have. This is what will give you sort of some of your bonuses from your headquarter units for each of your divisions. If you do not have this, your divisions will not perform as well, which is the same for anything here. Rifles same as vanilla but we've added some light infantry equipment which is smgs here which you will use for light infantry as it says which are separate from normal infantry we have uh, trucks here this is a light motorized this is your first motorized unit here and motorcycles are your technically your first mechanized because mechanized is sort of a mid-war later war thing here that is to note. Also, for people, a lot of people are like, well, why do I have to start producing all these things? Like, I'm running out of stuff. Let me go ahead and say this. When you research this here, this infantry anti-tank, when you research this sniper team, you will need to start producing those. I suggest maybe one or two factories at the very most to these. Same thing with mortars. I put no more than three factories in heavy machine guns, only three factories. You might want to save this video, come back to it, but two factories, two factories, three factories, three factories. This, once you build up a big supply of, of um, uniforms, maybe 
three factories, but you want to get up there in uniforms. So yeah, this is just a quick overview of infantry. Your specialist units are pretty much the same. I don't use them very often, but marines will be useful if you need them. So we're going to go to support units. We've added a few support units here. We've added flamethrowers. Engineer companies are still in here, but we've changed it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is relatively the same. We have some paratrooper engineers too. Artillery has been expanded now. It's not just anti-tank, just artillery, and just AA. We have split it up. So we have light artillery, medium artillery, heavy artillery. These are a little bit misaligned. And this, I believe, is the coastal artillery right here. This is coastal artillery. And for the uh, eagle-eyed person, I believe this is the rail artillery. The Gustav gun. You can get these. Have fun. Uh, but in order to move your artillery, you have a few options. You can use a mechanized unit like this. You can use a truck. Or you can use horses. Now, horses are cheapest, but they're going to be slower than your trucks. But they will not use fuel, which is an important thing. Which, as Germany, you want to be careful not to just keep using oil. Because oil, you want to use it for your planes and tanks. Here, we still have AA, which has been expanded into heavy and light AA. Sort of, I believe, regular and heavy. Here is the tech where you can research your flag towers, which, they're not necessarily too important, but this here. This amazing... This is the Flak 88 right here. You're going to want this. This will help you punch through those annoying Russian tanks. You will want that. Rocket artillery here and uh, anti-tank guns. Just the normal stuff. We have heavy anti-tank guns over here. So with that down, we come to the German tank tree. Most majors will have their own tank tree. Now something to note, if you are a miner, if you are a miner, you will be able to either get allied tanks, German tanks, or Soviet tanks, depending on who you side with. I might make another minor video later, or one of my other colleagues will make a minor video later, but every country should be able to get a custom tank in, in some way, whether it's their own country's tank, or if it's a uh, another country's major tank. But tank trees are expanded, as you can tell. Black Ice does not like making small trees. So we're going to come to the naval tabs, which Germany has two. We have an entire naval tech tree for submarines. And each of them have their own little upgrades right here. These can be important, but I don't necessarily focus on this, probably until after Man the Guns DLC, which has not come out at this point, because they are going to do a complete overhaul of naval warfare. Here we have the Kriegsmarine. Also, a lot of stuff is bound to change when Man the Guns comes out. The naval tree here has not changed. The naval doctrine tree has not changed. Maybe someday in the future we will, if someone on our team wants to tackle that, or if someone wants to join the team to tackle that. To tackle that. Now, we come to the Luftwaffe. And I can go ahead and say this tree is changing quite a bit for our next update. But the premise is the same. A lot of different variants of the BF-109, the Falkwolf-190, and all these other planes here. You have choices galore. And each plane will have its specialties. Certain things it's good at, certain things it's not good at. But what I will say is, as Germany, you're going to want to get your fighters down. You will need fighters pretty quickly. Oh. Air Doctrine is the same for now. 
unless somebody wants to come in and do some work. And the electronics engineering tab. We have a big new feature here, which is the radios. Now, radios are an important part of war during this time. The Russian tanks did not have radio. Some of them did not have radio, to clarify which made them less effective. The Germans had the throat radios. They had ra they were using radios very effectively. And we're trying to show that here. Now, this is by no means a German mod. This is a overhaul mod for Hoi 4. But I'm just giving you an example. But these radios, once you research them, these HQ radios especially, you're going to need to start producing them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. You will not ever need more than two factories on producing radios, unless you are in a big deficit. When you get these, hopefully you should aim to get a lot of these before the war starts, even though some of them you won't be able to, but you will need to get these as soon as possible, because they add 15 organization to your infantry, which is crucial. 10 organization to armor, organization to your motorized it, it adds so many important things to your army which can absolutely clobber the your opponents you will need these do you must allocate factories to producing these so if you're not going to produce armored cars don't even bother don't make armored car radios but you will lose a little bit of reconnaissance from your recon support but as i said this is important very very important right here radios and now we come to industry which is expanded now i've already discussed these here now these factories and these factories are the same they're just different color they unlock the same things they're just different colored now we're gonna look here the this tech is the same a lot of stats might be different, but we're going to come down here, tool maintenance. The industry tab is also a very important tab. If you really want to get the most out of your factors, you will want to make sure you focus here. But we're going to jump over here to construction. Each level of construction will give you a little bit of a boost to your building. But it will also unlock your resources, just resource excavation, just like vanilla. But it also unlocks your defense infrastructure, your infrastructure infrastructure, and your civilian infrastructure. These techs are very important. Now let me tell you why. This gives you 0.8 population, recruitable population. Another 0.8 recruitable population. Another 0.8. Another 0.8. Those are important. Division attrition reduction from your hospitals training time is reduced because of your schools these are very important techs here this road road network increases your factory output while these percentages are small you have to remember these are not the only things you're getting you're getting stuff from here too and if you start adding things together they will make a difference and especially if you're playing a minor this 0.8 recruitable population is incredibly important incredibly important so I've been I know I've been saying a lot of stuff is important but we've given you extra majors extra tech slots in which you can unlock like a few more I believe journey might be unlocked two or three more so use them army techs can always be caught up to but core things for you for your industry and your economy must be grabbed immediately. Now, I did say earlier that we separated oil and rubber fact, uh, synthetic refineries. So we have separate text here to increase oil refinery output. This will allow you to build more of oil and rubber refineries. You don't unlock rubber refineries until 1938 right here with this third tech in this little tree. And this will increase your rubber output. So, 
with a just quick overview of research. We can go into diplomacy, which is unchanged, just a little recolored. Trade, unchanged for now, although the update will do some changes. The uh, Black Eyes update will do some changes for that. We have tackled construction. Now let's go into production. That's a little loud, but you'll get used to it. So people are like, how am I supposed to manage all this right here? Look how much stuff there is. My god, what am I supposed to do? Relax. Let me give you a quick life hack. So. What I do to make life simpler is I treat these buttons as tabs. I almost never have more than one of these open. So I'll close and open this. Close and open this. Close and open this. This will make managing things, especially later, a lot more manageable. We're also coming out in our next update with, with a little bit wider um, UI for this, which will add more factories. It will make it a little wider, but it allows you to see more things. So, obviously, infantry equipment. Let Notice, submachine guns, two factories. Garrison equipment, two factories. You don't need a lot of factories for this stuff. So stuff that you're not really going to change or meddle with a lot, just go ahead and collapse them. You're not going to need to look at them. Just, you have to find a way to organize things for yourself. Number one, use these as tabs. Number two, just collapse stuff you're not going to need to look at. And if you need to add more factories, just click add one. You know, you can quickly add things if you need to. That, that's my two cents about how to manage production. And of course, we've upgraded the add equipment to produce thing to two columns to help you see things quicker. So with production out of the way, we can go to recruitment. Recruitment is essentially the same, but there is one thing to note, a very important thing to note about combat width. At this point, combat width in in the current Steam version of uh, August 18th, 2018, your combat width, what you want is about 30. In our next update, you will want a combat width of either 20 or 25, because we are changing the maximum to, I believe, 120. So to get the most out of your divisions without wasting of anything, you will want either 20 or 25 in the future, or currently about 30. That is something to note. Now, we're going to come here to support. So when if you're creating a division from scratch, let's see, can I create a division from scratch? Yeah, we're creating a division from scratch here. The first thing you want to add to your support is an HQ division. This is what division's stab is. It's your HQ. This is sort of your ranking officer, whoever's controlling or getting orders for this division to dish them out. You will need this. It is very important. On that note, then you can add what you want, whatever you need. I do recommend having artillery. And if you have tank divisions, have some motorized with them. Make them powerful. Don't just send tanks alone. We've also upgraded support to, I believe, a maximum of 10 support battalions here. So use them. You will need them. They will give you very useful bonuses. And finally, we have logistics, which is logistics is the same thing. All right. With that out of the way, let's just go through some things here. So, political power is the same, but you can tell as you hover over this, there is a lot of stuff, a lot of modifiers. Don't be afraid of this. Just look at the important number, the 2.46 per day. If it's too low or too high, then you can look at the reds and figure out what's going on. What's really hurting you and then adjust accordingly. Stability, stability, also a lot of uh, modifiers. Get used to seeing a lot of modifiers. More modifiers means it's a better mod. 
just hand, heads up. It means it's a better game, better mod. More stuff is happening. War support is war support. Manpower is manpower. Convoys, factories, money has not been implemented yet. That will be a future video. These are resource stockpiles, something we're working on currently. Still not out, which will be a separate video at some point. Command power, vanilla. These are your army, naval, and air experience. Vanilla. Uh, and then we just have army overview, which is the same, just a little bit recolored. Naval overview, the same. Air overview, the same. Now, we're going to get to another quick thing. The naval map mode's been changed a little bit. Provinces, naval provinces, have been made smaller. Which means you're going to have to really figure out where do you want to patrol, what you think is important. You can't just say, oh, just go patrol around England like you could in uh, Vanilla. You have to say, I want this fleet to patrol this side of, this side of England, the North Sea area. Or I want to patrol the Baltic Sea only. Even then, you have the approaches here as a separate region, the North Sea coast. And on that note, air zones. Now, people are going to be like, oh my god, what have you done with the air? Relax. Air has been simplified. These icons have been simplified. If you see any green in the image, it is a fighter. If you see any red, it is a bomber. So, I was like, what is this green and red thing? It is a fighter bomber. It can do both. Big example of this is the FW-190 or the P-47. Those are two big examples. And then you see blue. That means this must be naval. And if you look at the icon, it looks a little big, so it's a bomber, naval bomber. Then if it's pink or red-pink, it is a bomber. And then just depending on how it looks, I believe this is a CAS here. Close air support. So that is just a quick overview. Yellow means transport. So, air provinces have been made smaller. You can't just guard North Germany, South Germany. No, they're separate regions. Here, we've made them smaller which makes guarding Germany a little bit harder. It also means the AI will jump from province to province trying to hit things, which means you're going to have to sort of take care of it. You're going to have to really be careful. But if you have enough fighters, if you go for that fighter check early enough, build, start building the BF-109 if you're Germany really early, build up a good number of BF-109s, you will be able to guard Germany very efficiently. It is not impossible. So, with that being said, let's go to supply. Supply areas have been made smaller. It's more apparent when you come over here into the Soviet Union. But naval provinces have been made smaller because they were a little bit too big and they weren't really reflecting supply lines as efficiently. But we've done a, a small change for Black Eye, so beware of that. You're going to want to keep an eye out on your supply. States, map mode is not really important. Resources is not really much of a uh, thing. So that is the quick overview of Black Ice. Right go some so something Black Ice does add a lot of is a lot of generals. Now, now Germany does come with a lot of generals in vanilla, but we've added a bunch of generals here and there. And it is important to note there are bad traits for generals, so you need to keep an eye on it. Not every medal is a good medal. You have a bad general and an incompetent general. And on that note, we have added a bunch and a bunch of new traits. So, you will have a better pick of stuff. It, 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 you have a lot more sort of potential for what you want to do with your generals, especially your normal generals and then your field, field marshals. We also have added uh, admirals for Germany, I believe France, Italy, and the United Kingdom. 
And that will bring me to another note here, the final note. Black Ice is a mod designed to be played with majors. Now, majors here. The Soviet Union, rather obviously. Germany, obviously. The United Kingdom. Italy is eh, it's kind of a major. The United States. Or Japan. Now, secondary powers. Now, people might get a little salty about this. Sort of people you... They're not necessarily second, secondary powers, but secondary good countries to play as. Pretty fun. Brazil. Italy, I put in there. Uh, in China. Am I forgetting anything? Don't... Romania is pretty fun. Turkey. Turkey is what I was forgetting. Turkey is fun and Romania is fun, but Romania you get pretty much bullied by the Soviet Union. So, countries to not play as. France. France is designed to lose. It is designed for, the, for them to lose. Germany's real challenge is the UK and the Soviet Union. Spain. Don't do that to yourself. You can play Spain. We are doing a lot of work for Spain. It is not something I suggest for your first game play. It might be just a fun activity to do in an afternoon to play as Spain. But if you're trying to go for a full campaign, I'd go for a major or one of the secondary powers. Um, and that is it. I know people might want to take Luxembourg and conquer the world with Black Ice. It is not really possible. Black Ice is supposed to be an overhaul mod. It is the be-all, end-all of a, what a grand strategy should be at the end of the day. Hearts of Iron 4 is a great introductory game. Paradox has done a great job bringing people into this genre. Black Ice wants to push this a little bit farther. We want to make it into something you just always want to play. If you really want to challenge yourself. We've been around for a while. We're going to keep working on this. But for now, this is the end of this official tutorial. Like I said, the, the, uh, in the description will be the mods. All three of them on the Steam Workshop. The links. And uh, thank you all. I hope you all have fun playing Black Eyes. Ciao.